turn it down. Hello, good morning. Um, here I am. I've got no mascara on today and my lashes are notoriously shite. Um, because I think I'm getting another style and also my mascara is probably about a year old. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's giving me an eye infection. So I have just popped to boots and bought a new mascara. But anyway, here I am in the saloon and I haven't shown you well, I haven't vlogged for ages, so first of all, hi, welcome back. Um, and second of all, I haven't shown you, oh, there's me in the background, I haven't shown you like the salon up and running, um, which it is pretty much and has been for the last few weeks. I've just been so busy and like chaotic <laughs> to even think about vlogging, but I feel like this week I'm hoping to get some kind of vlog together for you. So anyway, should I show you the whole, the whole thing? Here we go. Right, firstly, we have a coat uh, rack. No, coat hook. Freestanding coat hanger thing. Just from John Lewis. Right, I need to do a bit more kind of VMing, so bear with. But anyway, I've got this shelf put up from next. I can't remember if I showed you this shelf, um, but it's products that I use that are on there whilst I'm doing hair. But I do want to sort it out and make it look a bit better. I don't need this many products there. I've seen this before, but we now have a trolley. Oh, all these wires, which I also need to sort out. I got them probably the most impractical stool there ever was for a hairdresser because there's no wheels on it. But I just really liked how it looked. I know, I know, I know, I'm ridiculous. Um, but I thought it just fit really well with the studio. And I don't actually sit on a stool that often, so I don't need the wheels. It's playing side table at the moment because I have, uh, I've ordered a little side table to go there, but it hasn't come yet my trolley which I need to tidy, wires we need to sort out, I mean this is also a mess, um, I've got some stock that I need to put away, but this is kind of the console area, I got this shelf put up, I really like how it looks, so I've got, I my friend actually bought these for me on Friday and I've got to take them home so they're just there for the moment, but I have my developers, Olaplex and my toners out here because I reach for those so much so I thought they would look quite nice on the shelf and also these are L'Oreal toners and I quite like the colour scheme that they've gone for and then this is just a bit of a mess but these cups I need to wash this stock I need to put away but I would just like to show you I bought this on last week to put my colour brushes in this is just from H&M so this is my little coffee area I thought I can't have a salad and not be able to, to offer decent coffee but speaking of which I haven't bought any more pods with me which I've got at home it's nothing I've forgotten anyway this is a little coffee pod holder that I got from Next I thought it was really cute and made it more of like a little area and we've got the smallest I think one of the smallest coffee machines you can get this is the Ascenza from Nespresso I think and then just a Lavazza milk frother heater thing and then these cups which if you've not seen them before they're a brand called Husky and they're made from coffee husks um, but this is the smallest size you can get bigger sizes but I just thought they were so practical for the in here because they're not I would love to get some lovely ceramic ones but I just don't think as I say they'd be that practical but these feel kind of plasticky and robust but I also think they look great love the color this laundry basket which I actually think I might change to a narrower one because I'd also like to get a little trolley to put other product on here namely my shampoos um, but anyway we've got a mirror here and then my brooms just kind of hidden there other little shelving area so this is the basin unit which I don't think you've seen with a chair before this chair's from Ikea I think I mentioned I got a pedestal basin which is just a basin that's just like that I wanted to put this chair in front so I could really make like a kind of, just make it look a little bit more in keeping with the salon vibe. Um, and the chair works really, really well. It's so comfy, so I'm really pleased. And then I've got these shelves here, which are similar to the string shelving, but they're from a website called Sklum, S-K-L-U-M. And at the moment we've got shampoos up there, towels, and then I've done a little bit of VM, you can see there with the book and the vase. But I want to make this a bit more of a feature visually, hence why I want to get a trolley to put my shampoos on that will go like either next to, like if this is half the size of this laundry basket, it can go there or just here, ignore that cos bag. Just because then I can reach the shampoos more easily because at the moment they're up there and it's not that easy to get to. There we go, I feel like I can hear someone outside. I'm gonna shut this door because I feel like someone might be listening to me. Anyway, so there we go, that is the salon so far, all up to date. Yeah, it's up and running and I'm loving it, it's so good. I still can't believe I have this space. Um, it's Monday, Gabe's at nursery, I've got a client this morning and then I should be 
well, I think Hainsey will be picking up Gabe later, dropping him to me, and then I am going to be meeting one of my mum's friends with Gabe for afternoon tea this afternoon. I don't know how much I'm going to get vlogged today, but I thought I would at least get it off to a start, as I always say. Um, so yeah, I've got to sort some things out before my girl comes this morning. So yeah. Okay, um, I've got a spot on my nose. Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday morning. As chaotic as always. I've actually got quite a nice morning. Hainsey's taking Gabe to nursery and then he's just popped to, I think he's getting the car washed and he needs to get a few bits and pieces and all that stuff. So I've got a nice little morning to myself this morning. So I've had a shower, washed my hair, did my skincare, which felt great. I'm just about to make my second coffee of the day and I'm gonna make myself some breakfast. I fell off the side of a cliff. Um, well, not literally. Um, so yeah, Monday, obviously vlogging didn't go to plan. I <laughs> started off well. And then the thing is, in the salon, a lot of my clients are kind of like friends now. So we have a good old chat and then I get busy and I forget and it just doesn't feel like optimum time to pull my camera out. And then after doing hair, I'm often quite tired. And on Monday, I went for tea and cake with my mum's friend and Gabe, which ordinarily would be a lovely thing to do, but Gabe is really difficult at the moment. <laughs> I think we're on the precipice of the terrible twos. And also he's just older now and he's just not as content to sit still for very long. We actually went for dinner on Sunday, because it was Mother's Day, and he was so good, but I think it's mostly because we had a big roast dinner and we were feeding him some of our roast dinner. And he had like a little toy and as soon as he got bored of, it, of one toy he played another one and then we were feeding him and there was just more going on. Um, whereas, yeah, tea and cake. I fed him like a whole pan of chocolate without even realizing just to distract him for long enough so I could drink my coffee and eat a bit of the cake that I had. Because all he wants to do is run around, which is fine, totally get it. Um, but it was the first time that we've done that and I was like, oh my God, it wasn't. <laughs> It just wasn't fun. So I was quite exhausted from that. And yeah, Gabe's just a lot at the moment. A lot of emotions, a lot of development, and I, I get it, but it's challenging. Um, coupled with running a business, working, everything else. I'm just, I just think I'm just trying to say to any other mums that are really feeling the juggle. Oh, hello. Sorry, Hainsey just came in and then just um, distracted me. Uh, what was I saying? The struggle. And yeah, it's very easy for me to feel quite chaotic at the moment because I just feel like there's a constant, people often talk about like the mental load that comes with becoming a mum and having a child. And people describe it as like a constant running checklist of like, have I done this? Have I done this? Do we need this? I need to do that. So that, the mum side of it, coupled with the business side of things, coupled with the home side of things, it's just, yeah, it's very easy to suddenly feel overwhelmed and chaotic. On that note, I'm just making myself some breakfast. I've um, mashed up some avocado and I'm gonna make a poached egg. Have I already told you this? Or did I just voice note that to my friend what I was having for my breakfast? I think I've voice noted it to my friend. <laughs> I'm gonna get on and have breakfast. Good morning. Um, I've got something, have I told you what I'm doing today? I'm doing a client at my salon. I think I'm gonna pop into town just before then to get a few bits. Um, and then I need to do things like I'm trying to launch a website, so I need to work on that. I've got some prices together to upload onto my Instagram, so that they're all my highlights, but I just need to refine them. I've got some phone calls to make, like some admin bits to do, so I'm going to be doing that this morning. I also do want to sit and talk to you about the process of the startup loan for a new business, because a few of you were interested in hearing more about that. Um, so I'll also do that at some point, but let me just have my breakfast and then hopefully I can get my thoughts together. <laughs> okay, so I'm just about to leave to pop out to town before I go to my appointment this afternoon. Um, I thought, let me just quickly sit down and talk to you about funding for starting a business um, because I keep meaning to do it and I'm, I haven't. So for those of you that aren't aware, I just recently opened my very first hairdressing salon like studio space. It's like a private space basically. It doesn't face 
the high street it's not like an operating salon in that way it's just a place for me to work and i get my business mostly through social media wanted to talk a bit more about the funding for that because i think it's something that can be very daunting it was definitely daunting to me and when i looked at people opening businesses or getting office space all that kind of stuff to grow their business i was always like how are they affording to pay an, an extra rent and all the you know business costs up front how are they affording to do that are they just saving um i think it is very different if you're like a social media person for example that's already very established and then you get an office space because your income is so great that you probably can fund that yourself so yeah when it comes to watching established influencers do things like that i feel like it's not as transparent because i think a lot of them can just fund it themselves that's being very general but no one really talks about in in normal life how you would fund a business venture in that way I always wanted to do this i hadn't thought about getting funding for it because that was then voluntarily going into debt which i have done <laughs> through credit cards and such um, but this just seemed like a very big grown-up responsibility that I didn't feel like I would be ready for. I would have just felt more comfortable if I'd have just saved the money, spent it, it's gone, I don't have to pay it back. That's more manageable for me. However, most people do do this because it's the only way to, in business speak, like scale your business and grow. And it first came about into my mind because I have a friend who does acupuncture and she was talking about wanting, she rents a space currently in a clinic, she wanted to get her own space, open her own clinic. I then said to her, so how are you funding that? And she said, oh, the, the government do a startup loan. And it was the first time that I suddenly thought, let me start looking into business loans then. I had a bit of a talking to myself because I've been doing hair in my friend's salon, self-employed, I've also been doing hair at home but I have there's a glass ceiling for me at home I can't really grow I can only do so many clients but especially now having moved it's just not set up to do hair at all so it was the beginning of the year I was like I really do need to if I want to do this I need to actually seriously think about doing it I also have aspirations to grow a hair brand I possibly to open a salon at some point I do have business ambition with what I want to do and with not having an actual space to do that, operating from someone else's space, that feels quite um, restricting, restrictive. I just had a bit of a talking to myself and said, this is the only way that you're gonna be able to get past this block in order to move forward and you're not getting any younger. <laughs> and there's no time like the present, you've just gotta go for it now, there's no excuses. And I, the thing about the business loan is you do the credit check first. So you don't proceed with the application unless you pass the credit check. And passing that was already quite validating to me to then move forward with this application. The way that the business loan works is that it's anything from like 500 to 25 grand. I think anything over 10 grand, you have to give like more stuff. Like you have to fill in more forms and give them more information about your business. I took under 10,000, so it was quite straightforward and really, really quick, a lot quicker than I thought it would be. The whole thing was done and dusted within about four days. So that's just an example of it's not a really long back and forth, but it is daunting. But I'm here to tell you that if I can do it, if you've got aspirations to, then so can you. It's, it's spreadsheets and it's a business plan and it's profit and loss templates and it's sales forecasts. But actually, everything is there for you when you log on. So once you've done the credit um, check, you then can access all the templates that you need and you just use them. You do have to do a bit of a, not a Q&A, like give some information about your business plan, your experience in the business, why you want to do it, why you think it will work, um, a bit of market research to show that you've thought about the business landscape and just to kind of, showcase that you have thought this through and it's not just oh i want to do this and this is why that's also really helpful i found for someone that doesn't have a great relationship with money detaching money from myself in like an emotional way and just being like these are the facts this is what's going in this is what's coming out and this is what i'm spending it on and this is what i need to do so it's a really good exercise just for me personally as well as really focusing in on your business 
because this is a start up loan it's not for long term costs so I wanted to say that I could have 12 months rent as part of this loan they're like we can't do that long you can only have three I mean once you get the loan they don't know what you spend it on but in terms of your budgeting because you have to budget out what you're going to spend the loan on every single thing you have to cost out um, so with rent you can't you can only do three months because as I say it's not designed to cover long term costs because which is helpful because actually if you had long term rent already like budgeted out and paid for you may not then be as driven to you know get the business to progress because it's like oh well I've got the money to cover it so I can just do this or just do the bare minimum it really focuses you to push your business forward so yeah that's kind of how I went about it and as I say the application process was really quick um, you basically put your application in initially do all your spreadsheets you then get a business advisor who gives you a call and will talk through your costs and everything they then put it forward to the people that approve the loan so they can kind of tweak things for you and say oh I'm gonna I'm gonna allocate this budget for this I'm gonna move this here um, to kind of get your application ready so that you have more of a chance of getting approved you then have access to a year's free business mentoring if you want it that that's pretty much it as I say I put my application in on like a Thursday or a Friday or maybe it was a Wednesday heard back on the Friday and then it all got approved and like went through on like the Monday Tuesday Hainsey's just walked in the door oh are you on the you no, it's, not you. it's all right you can say hi hi <laughs> I was wrapping up I was coming towards the end anyway there we go oh it's quite low down there we go hello hi <laughs> You're like a little turtle with your back. Destroy <laughs> Okay. See you later. Brilliant. Um, yeah. So put it in on like the Wednesday or whatever. Heard back from the no, maybe it was all on the same day actually. I heard back from the business advisor on like the Monday morning. He was then like, oh, I'll give you a call if I need anything else. And then by that afternoon, I got an email saying it was all approved and had gone through. And then I got the money through maybe three days later. Um, and then it was all systems go. So that was basically in and out of how I got the business loan and how I funded doing this. I think that's covered everything. If you have any other questions, do let me know. I'm obviously not like the spokesperson for this business loan. I'll leave the website down below. I think it's just startuploans.co.uk. And the big benefit of it is because it's government funded, with a normal loan, if you choose to pay it back over five years, that will mean that you pay back more rather than paying it back in one year. However, with this one, you can choose to pay it back between one to five years, but if you choose five, which is the maximum, your monthly payment is then the lowest it can be. However, if you then can pay it back within a year or two years, basically before that deadline, you don't get charged extra. You don't get charged for paying it back early. What you pay back, what you agree to pay back, it's that price and it doesn't change. So whether you pay it back in six months, whether you pay it back in five years, it doesn't change if that makes sense whereas other loans you get penalized for paying it back early and you have to pay more because they make money by having you pay it back over a longer period of time so they don't want to incentivize you to pay it back early if that makes sense right alexa Turn it down, for goodness sake. No one wants to hear you anymore. I've just made my hair look somewhat presentable. I just picked up, actually, on the way here. Um, is that still loud? Alexa, turn it down. For God's sake. No one wants to listen to you at the moment. Um, right, so I just picked up some mini eggs, Cadbury, dairy milk, whatever this is, for me and Rachel to feast on when she gets here. I also went to Starbucks because, no I didn't, I went to Waitrose to get Starbucks and espresso pods. I didn't talk to you yesterday, did I? But I keep forgetting to bring my grind um, coffee pods down here. And so I only had two left. So I went yes, and I realised just how many pods this drawer can hold. There's one drawer that I draw, what's it called? A slot that I filled. And this is the Starbucks Blonde Roast, which I got the other day because uh, I went into Starbucks and thought, oh, let me get grab some coffee pods while I'm here. They didn't have house blend and I'm not really a coffee aficionado, but all the other ones they had were like 11, turned up to 11, intensity 11. I thought, oh, I don't know if that would be too strong. 
So this blonde rose is six. It's not strong in the slightest. So I think it's perfect for like a second coffee or an afternoon coffee. But actually it's really quite nice. I don't know why I'm showing you the pod because it's in a it comes in a thing like this, but yeah, I would if you're if you don't like strong coffee, I would really I quite enjoyed this. Anyway, I then thought I might just get a couple more. And I know Starbucks isn't like the best coffee, but like I say, I mean I'm not really I'm not actually really bothered. So I bought the Columbia, which is an intensity of seven, and the Sumatra, which is an intensity of 10. So we'll see, I'm not gonna actually have a coffee today, um, but I will sample these as the week goes on and see, and you know, feed back to you if that's what you'd like. Um, you probably don't. There we go, that's where we are. <laughs> Right, there we go. We're not going to need coffee anytime soon, are we? Although I do need to fill up this side because I like it to be as equal as possible. And maybe get a little wild card to go in here. We're going way back. I've got some Connie Francis falling. But because we always love a 90s reference, who knows why we have Connie Francis? I tell you, it was in the craft. Nancy's mum used to listen to it. She wanted a whole jukebox that played Connie Francis. So you're welcome for that pointless piece of trivia. Yes, we've got Hey Dougie on. Um, it's just me. You just popping in to end this vlog. And so are you. It's gone on way too long. Um, I want to try and get this vlog up tonight. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. It's lovely to be back vlogging. Hopefully um, I'll vlog it again a little bit this week maybe and have another one up next week. I mean, who knows? But yes, thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in chatting about your hair and coming to see me, then I will leave the details down below of my Instagram. Um, and I'll pop it on the screen here actually, but basically just send me a DM um, and we can sort something out. And there we go. Thanks for watching.